Hello friends. So it has been 8 months now that coronavirus has made its appearance on earth. And yet people are not sure whether to regard it like a simple virus like any other flu virus or to regard it as a dangerous virus. When will this pandemic end? Till now I was listening about deaths happening on the TV. Now I am listening about deaths happening in my neighborhood. So should I still continue to be at home? or should i now accept it as a unavoidable risk and start going out and because of the fear of covid people around them are also avoiding them excessively so rather than supporting them during this difficult time they are actually creating more problem for them luckily in the past 8 months because of scientific research our understanding of corona has grown by leaps and bounds In this video we are going to review some of the important findings of this research so that we have a clearer picture of what we are dealing with so that we can give a balanced response not panicking and at the same time not inviting trouble ourselves so let's start the biggest good news is that now we have many effective weapons to fight this enemy first anticoagulants so initially we had thought that it is the pneumonia caused by this virus which is killing people and therefore we had thought okay let's get a lot of ventilators and we will be able to save people but now we know that this virus causes clotting of blood in the small blood vessels of the lungs and it is because of this that the lungs are not able to function effectively and so there is a drop in the oxygen saturation of the blood just with giving simple anticoagulant medicines we are able to now prevent this clotting from taking place and hence many lives are getting saved second oxygen cylinders it has been seen that that in most people simple high flow oxygen given using oxygen cylinders is enough to maintain adequate oxygen saturation of the blood ventilators are not being required in most patients also it was seen that in a lot of people the oxygen saturation would drop significantly without they experiencing any symptoms and therefore they wouldn't uh, go to the hospital in time and therefore they were dying now with the help of a simple device called pulse oximeter we can check oxygen saturation of the blood very easily you just have to keep the finger in it on it and it will tell you what the oxygen saturation is you can either check it at your home or you can go to the nearby doctor and get it checked if the oxygen saturation is less than 94% then you must immediately seek medical attention third steroids it is now known that it is not the virus which is killing people but body's inflammatory reaction to the virus called cytokine storm which is killing people simple steroids given judiciously by the doctor can save a lot of lives and fourth antivirals now there are two effective antivirals remdesivir and favipiravir which decrease the viral load in the body significantly now because of these advances the proportion of patients with severe covid disease who are dying has decreased dramatically the case fatality rate in india has dropped to 1.9% now most of the deaths are occurring in either old people or those who have other illnesses like diabetes cancers heart disease etc another advancement in knowledge has been that even the micro droplets which get ejected when a person is simply speaking even they can spread the infection and therefore now we regard human to human direct spread through air to be the main mode of transmission and so it is imperative that when we go out we maintain a distance of 2 to 3 meters from people around us and we always wear a mask in fact some authorities are of the view that the mask can act like a vaccine when we take a vaccine we are actually injecting a inactive part of the virus particle the body develops a immune response to that part and in the process develops immunity to fight that virus similarly when you wear a mask the number of virus particles which enter your body is much less compared to the number of particles which would have entered if the mask was not there 
and hence the probability that it would result in a mild or asymptomatic infection is higher. Now when the body is dealing with only a mild infection, in the process the body learns how to fight the virus and so there is a higher probability that you will develop immunity to the virus. The case study of Japan illustrates how effective masks and physical distancing can get. Japan had not imposed a strict lockdown. People were just voluntarily trying to work from home as much as possible. The proportion of elderly population in Japan is high and therefore it was expected that the death rate would be higher. However, the death rate per million population over there is just 9.2. The death rate per million population in India is 40.4. In Italy, it is 585. The probable re reasons for the success of Japan are said to be 1. People over there had a habit of wearing masks even before the pandemic started. 2. People in Japan have a healthy lifestyle. They are fit. The prevalence of obesity and diabetes is very low over there. And 3. They were following the principle of avoid three C's. Closed spaces, crowded spaces and close contact. Recently, the people in Japan are getting overconfident and they have started moving out of their homes more. And as a result, we are seeing that in the last few days, the death rates over there have started increasing a bit. I see that some people are of the view. It's my choice whether I want to wear a mask or not. Friends, our individual freedom has to get restricted when it starts interfering with collective welfare. So just because someone feels that I find the mask very uncomfortable or someone feels that I don't agree with what the public health experts have to say, that doesn't mean anything. If you are a responsible citizen, then you must wear a mask every time you move outside your home. Another very important point about the masks is there are some masks with a valve. Because of that, air is not allowed to freely come inside. However, because of the valve, air can freely move from inside to outside. So if I have COVID infection or if I am an asymptomatic carrier, then such a mask will not prevent the virus from within my body to go out and infect people around me. So if I want to protect not only myself but also my near and dear ones around me then I should not wear a mask with a valve. And then we have seen that ultraviolet light, sunlight and betadine are quite effective in killing the virus. And if the cross ventilation of a place is good then the concentration of virus in the air decreases significantly. So it is a nice idea to keep the windows of the home open. Or if there is a place wherein there are a lot of people to keep the exhaust fan on. People are getting a doubt. Is it safe to get admitted in these makeshift hospital camps which have been put up on open grounds? In fact, because the ventilation over there is much better, it's safer to get admitted there compared to the closed AC rooms of big hospitals. A big question people are having is, when would we be getting the vaccine? So Russia is launching its vaccine without doing phase 3 trials by August end. But the Oxford vaccine which probably would be the first vaccine to complete all the phases of trial is expected to get launched by early next year. And experts are of the view that even if that vaccine is half effective, we should be able to get reasonable control of the pandemic by the end of next year. Now let us look at these graphs of daily death rate at places which had initially experienced a rapid spread of infection. Since the last two months, these places are recording an extremely low death rate. This gives us a very strong reason to hope that there is a possibility of good herd immunity developing in this disease. Due to an effective early lockdown, we didn't have the initial surge of deaths which they had. We flattened the curve and therefore we are continuing to have a high rate of deaths. But soon the curve should bend over here also and we can expect the death rates to get controlled. Another finding which has given us a big reason to cheer is that of secondary attack rate. A meta-analysis 
of 13 zero prevalence studies done by professor mavlankar and his team at iiph gandhinagar has shown that the average secondary attack rate is just 10 to 20% which means that if a person with covid infection comes in contact with 100 people only 10 to 20 people will get it now though this virus passes on easily from one person to other probably around 50% of the population is just not susceptible to it and therefore the secondary attack rate is just 10 to 20 percent. An important implication of this finding is that initially we had estimated that for good herd immunity to develop around 60 to 70 percent of the population would have to get infected. But now the hypothesis is that with just around 25 percent zero prevalence the community spread will get blocked and our experience is also corroborating with it. In New York City surveys had shown that by around June end, 25% of the population had got infected by the virus and around the same time, the spread of the virus also had got controlled. Similarly in Delhi, a recent survey had shown that the zero prevalence is over there is 22% and we know that already the number of new cases over there has gone down dramatically. Since August, the death rate in Delhi has dropped to around 10 to 15 per day. In the slum of Dharavi in Mumbai, the zero prevalence is around 57% and over there, the number of new cases is now almost zero. Now, in these zero prevalence studies, the blood is tested for IgG. Immunoglobulin G indicates that the person has had COVID infection in the past and now they are relatively immune to the virus. So if a company wants to know which of its employees are relatively safe to join back work, they can also get this IgG testing done. What are the latest estimates about infection fatality rate? So as we know, the case fatality rate in India is 1.9%, which means out of 100 people who are diagnosed with COVID infection, 1.9% people die. But as we know, around 90% people who get this infection don't get any symptoms or get very mild symptoms. So most of them never get tested and so we don't come to know that they have this infection. If we consider all these undiagnosed cases also and then calculate the fatality rate, then what we get is called as infection fatality rate. According to zero prevalence studies done across the world in different countries, it has been seen infection fatality rate ranges between 0.5% to 1%. Now this is for all the ages taken together. For people below the age of 50 years, the infection fatality rate is 0.04%. For people between 50 to 59, it is 0.3%. For people between 60 to 69, it is 1.3%. For people between 70 to 79, it becomes 4%. And for people above 80, it jumps to 10%. So, for people above the age of 60 years, it is a pretty dangerous virus. But for people below the age of 60 years, the infection fatality rate is quite similar to other flu viruses. And for children below the age of 18 years, the risk of death is extremely low, occurring mostly only in those who have other severe diseases. So many people are worried that if something happens to us, it is okay but nothing should happen to our children. People can feel reassured that children are relatively the safest amongst us all. Now someone will say, can I accept that the probability of death is very low in those below the age of 60 years, but at least some possibility is there that I or my dear one may die. Yes, some possibility is definitely there. But wasn't there a little possibility of death even before the pandemic started and would it not remain even after the pandemic is over? It's just that during the pandemic, this probability of death has increased a bit. The day we were born, had it not been decided the same day that one day we will die? If only we embrace this fact of our mortal nature and accept this small probability of death, 
then we would be able to experience a freedom from this fear. In fact, my spiritual guru recommends that daily morning we should remind ourselves of the fact that one day I am going to die. According to him, this keeps us mindful of the fact that we have limited time on this earth and this ensures that we use our time judiciously. Now, along with all this good news, there is some bad news also. In the below 60 years age group also, some people, including doctors, are dying. So while the risk is very low, some risk is there. Second, most patients recover completely within a few weeks. But in few patients, some symptoms like fatigue, cough, breathlessness, headache, joint pains, etc. can persist for many months also. And thirdly, the clotting of small blood vessels which happens in the lungs can happen in other important organs like brain, heart, liver, kidney, etc. also. And this can result in long-lasting damage to these organs also in few patients. Now, in how many patients this will take place? How significant would be the impact of this damage? We don't have clear answers to this. But is this a good enough reason for us to take all the precautions, wearing masks and physical distancing and washing hands intermittently? Absolutely yes. And most importantly, this virus is not that dangerous that we fear while helping families which are dealing with this disease. If we keep our fear of COVID in check and help people in their time of need, then tomorrow when we will develop COVID, there is a high probability that we will get the right kind of support at the right time and that will help us survive this pandemic. Take care.